Welcome to beautiful Memphis, Tennessee, as we get set to watch the best racquetball players in the world. You're watching the 2006 Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships. Hi, everyone. I'm Sean Royster, alongside former Top 5 Pro Aaron Katz. Aaron, you've been around this sport for many years, had much success on the Pro Tour. Let's talk about the setting of this event with the portable court, stadium full of screaming fans. You know this tournament means a ton to these players. Hey, it's by far the biggest tournament of the year. There is not even a close number two. It's got the most prize money, the most prestige, the most ranking points, and that's what gets these players juiced up to just lay it all out on the court. Well, I'm juiced up. This is an exciting event. We've got the best players in the world. Let's talk about some of these players in this draw today. Well, today's matchup, by far the best matchup of the quarterfinals. We've got Cliff Swain, six-time number one player in the world, 40 years old, playing in his last U.S. Open against Jason Menino, also a former number one, former U.S. Open champ, and really looking to reclaim his spot as a contender for the number one ranking. Well, let's start with Jason Menino. Something you should know about Jason, back when he was a teenager, he broke his back in a vicious car accident. And his game style now is just not indicative of what we were hearing from a doctor saying he would never walk again. He recovered from his injuries, came back, got a world title, has won this tournament. I mean, what can you say about Jason? Jason's got a very unique style. It's a combination of a little bit of reckless abandon that he dives all over the court and gets to everything but he plays very, very smart, very strategically, and probably has the best shot selection on the tour. So let's talk about Jason's draw, who he had to deal with to get to Cliff today. Jason had a tough draw, but not a terribly tough draw. He played a tough young player from New England named Mike Ketty in the round of 32s and played a former pro, Woody Klaus, and had a reasonably close four-game match. But Jason should be very fresh, very rested, very prepared for his match today. Jason's opponent today, a champion of our sport, known as the greatest racquetball player in the world, with six world titles, Cliff Swain. Has he been tested in this tournament yet? He has not been tested, and that is a good thing. He played Vince Gagnon, a young but unseasoned player in the round of 32s, and Alejandro Herrera, a very tough player from Mexico that went 12-10 in the third game, but Cliff has not lost a game yet. He will be well-rested and fired up for his match today with Jason. So if you've never seen pro racquetball before, you are in for a treat. These are two veterans of the game, two champions, an exciting quarterfinal match. When we get back here on the Tennis Channel, Cliff Swain, Jason Menino. The Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships is brought to you by Choice Hotels International, family of hotel brands with over 5,000 locations and eight different brands worldwide, offering every type of accommodation in every price range. We meet all your travel needs. For reservations, visit us at choicehotels.com today. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. And by Wilson Art Flooring. If it's tough enough for pro racquetball, it's tough enough for your home. Enjoy the beauty and durability of Wilson Art Flooring, available at fine floor covering centers everywhere. Also, Nuveen Investments, dedicated to helping you reach your goals in life. Ask your financial advisor today how Nuveen's growing range of equity and fixed income products can help you support your long-term plans. And by USA Racquetball, your link to the greatest game on earth. To learn more about how racquetball can improve your quality of life, visit usaracquetball.com for all the details. It was almost 50 years ago when Danny Thomas had a dream. A dream of creating a unique research hospital devoted to curing catastrophic diseases in children. More than just a treatment facility, this would be a research center for children from all parts of the world. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital has always played a big part in the sport of racquetball. Every year since the U.S. Open began here in Memphis, the players take time out to go over and visit these children. The Choice Hotel's U.S. Open Racquetball Championships has donated now over $100,000 to St. Jude's. This helps in advancing the research and treatment for these brave children. Not only is this great for the kids to meet these professional athletes, but it's also a reminder to the players and all of us truly what real strength and courage is all about. Uh, this is the 11th U.S. Open that I've played in, and uh, the only way this one is a little bit different to me is that it's probably my last one. And um, I don't know it's always really important to win here. If you win most, uh, I think 10 out of the 11 times, or 9 out of 10 times we've had this tournament, 
Um, the person who wins this ends up number one. So, you know, that's a big part of it, but you know, I really, really want to do well here. This is my last one, but most importantly, I need to, when I get out there, I need to not think about that, if, if at all possible. I'm playing Jason Menino today, and he's, uh, he's a real tough competitor. It's, uh, one good thing about him is that uh, you, you know that he's coming to play every single time. He's not one of those guys you can count on just occasionally not showing up. You know, he doesn't always play well, just like any other human, but he always comes to play, and uh, I'm going to have to play my hardest and play my best to get this done. It's Jason's game style, he likes to, uh, likes to re-kill from the center, gets a ton of balls, likes to put pressure on you, likes to try and get you to do things that you really shouldn't do, which is, you know, trying to kill balls from too high. It's always real tempting because he puts it in there nice and soft for you, but he's really good at re-killing up front, and if you overshoot, um, it doesn't usually go well. So I've got to be patient, but really aggressive at the same time. Uh, Jason and I have battled many times, and it usually comes down to a battle of the serve and serve return. Whoever does that the best usually wins between the two of us. U.S. Open, you're always excited coming to the U.S. Open, so it's easy to explain because it's like the pinnacle of our sport. So, uh, you know, you get your first round or two jitters going, and, uh, you know, that's a little stressful. But uh, this year is no different from any other year. I train the same every year. I play hard every year. It's, the only difference is, is, you know, my body's one year older. Being one of the four people to ever win this tournament is, uh, you know, I guess, some ego gratification and does give you some confidence. But uh, this tournament is uh, just like every other tournament. You know, you want to go out there. You want to play as hard as you can. You want to get the crowd involved, you want to entertain. So there's, there's really no difference in this and any other year of this tournament. Uh, but there is a difference between this and any other tournament uh, insofar as there's a thousand people watching you live and there's you know, millions of people watching you on television. So um, you know, that little extra adrenaline does, uh, does help you. And being able to know that you've already won this tournament uh, is priceless. I'm uh, playing Cliff Swain and uh, you know, he's probably the best player to ever play the game. So, uh, you know, I battled a hundred times before and we usually kill each other. And I don't expect this match to be any different from any other match that we've uh, ever played, which just means we're going to go after each other's throat and uh, you know, hopefully I'll be able to come out on top. Playing Cliff for me has, is, uh, is difficult. Cliff is the best player to ever play the game. He's got a lot of strengths, uh, not very many weaknesses. Uh, I like to apply my strengths to other people's strengths because I feel like I can wear them down. So typically what I do to Cliff is put him in the back of the court, let him shoot a little bit, try to make some re-kills, uh, make him stress, uh, try to dive and get some balls and, and make him press and stop missing. And if I can get him to stop missing, I can get him hanging his head. And if I can get him hanging his head, I, I win that match. Aaron, here we are in Memphis. I am excited about this. You heard in the interviews, Jason's ready to play. Cliff's ready to play. They've been in this situation many times. I mean, what can you say about this match? Yeah, it's a great matchup. You know, it could be Cliff's last U.S. Open, so you know he's got to have a wide array of emotions going through him right now. Nothing would make him happier than to end his career with the U.S. Open Championship. Jason Menino wins the coin toss. By the way, a name you're going to hear a lot today, Jason Thorner, our referee. Zero, zero, zero. The toughest job in the business. Yeah, and he's been doing it for years, and it doesn't get any easier. So Jason Menino wins the toss. We have the best three out of five. They play to 11. There's only one serve, not like tennis or any of these other sports where you get a fault. This is one chance to get this ball in. You've got to get it past the short line. It's got to bounce before the back wall. And we're underway. You know, the one wild card of this match, Sean, that we don't know is how Jason's calf is going to hold up. Zero, zero, zero. Pull the calf in the first round. You see he's wearing the brace to help keep it warm, help keep it firm. But as the match goes on and with as physical as this match is going to be, he already dove twice on the first point. We'll see how that calf holds up. Yeah, you know, the way he plays as he dives, he's got to push off his, off his toe. Man, that's going to be – he must be – must be only able to uh, shoot off of that left leg. Is that a good shot? Yeah. Hold it. Replay. Just replay. It. Yeah, the first argument. Zero, seven, zero. Cliff thought that was a crack on the right side wall, and I think Cliff probably has a pretty good point of view. He hit a shot that went front wall and hit the side wall crack. Jason stretched down. Don't think he got it, but got the hinder call from the ref, Jason Thorner. Here's Cliff with the drive serve. Great Z serve by Cliff. Side out. It's a great, great shot. Yeah, you know, Jason, 
you know, he plays very physical, dives a lot, but plays very smart. There you saw he very wisely hung on the right side of the court, saw that Cliff was running forward and would likely hit the forehand cross court, and it was there for a nice little soft re-kill. Wow, what a One chance seven, of uh, Jason to hit that lob serve to the forehand, but it actually turned out to be a good shot. And that's Jason's game. Jason doesn't have much of a drive serve. His game, and he's got the best lob serve in the game, he's going to mix it up and try and get you to do too much with the ball. Point. That was kind of a loose Two point seven, by zero. Cliff. He tried to put a, kind of a silly little touch shot and then charged forward and let Jason wind up with it. A, really a pretty pedestrian passing shot off the back wall. Cliff holding his racket up. You get 10 seconds in the back to hold your racket up and get set. Broken ball. Sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a good call. We got a broken ball here. Hey, it's two, two points into the match. Broken ball. The replay, two serving zero. You know, good start with for Jason here. The last couple of years here at the U.S. Open, Jason's gotten off to some very bad starts in his quarterfinal matches and has had a claw his way back in. Last year, if I recall, he got too far behind and couldn't work his way back into the match. Cliff looks a little sluggish right now. It's very early, so I don't want to jump to conclusions, but he's played a couple of sloppy points and does not seem to be exhibiting the intensity that we've seen from him the last several years here. Let's see if he can work his way into this match. So Cliff Swain, uh, currently ranked number five, but uh, definitely known as the greatest player of all time with six world titles. Jason Menino in the front, playing for Pro Kennex, currently ranked number four, but also a world champion and a champion of this tournament, the US Open. And it's 3-0, Jason Menino with the lead. Back wall. Play. Three, yeah, Jason's really reaching here. He's looking at Jason Thorner, suggesting that maybe he should get a avoidable hinder. He was spinning off the back wall. Granted, Cliff probably should have cleared a little bit more, but that was not a clear offensive shot. Right up. Three zero. zero. We're gonna take a little break now as Cliff is yet to get on the board here. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Cliff Swain up in the service box. No points on the board yet. Zero serving three. Drive serve to Jason's long backhand setup. and a long serve. So again, just for those of you who are trying to understand the rules and you're watching this for the first time, the ball has to bounce between that second solid line where Jason's right foot is and bounce before it hits the back wall. Great Seven. shot by Cliff Swain. Zero serving three. You know, when Jason goes down like that, and I think he may have gone down a little too soon there, I think he could have gotten to that ball on his feet. But when he goes down like that, he's got to do more with the ball there because getting up and recovering is so difficult. You know, you've mentioned in the past, Aaron, about different, different players One who just three. dive and reflick the ball up just as a retrieval. Something that Jason does so well is he dives and actually does something offensive with the shot. Which is going to be critical in this match. He's really going to have to do something because he's going to hit the floor a lot if Cliff plays anywhere near his normal game. Great get on the serve there. Short seal on ball. Well, I think Cliff really was surprised that Jason got that serve back. He thought he hit an ace. He had a perfect serve to the right side, and that's Cliff's bread and butter serve. Jason dove and hit a great ceiling ball. Oh, boy. Hmm. I think Cliff got fortunate one, with that seven, one. That was three. a terrible return. Yeah, he set Jason up, and Jason, uncharacteristic, I thought, made a, a poor shot selection to Cliff's, uh, Cliff's backhand, and Cliff had a relatively easy re-kill. One serves three, Cliff Swain in the front. Not a, not a great serve three right now. He, his, his serve, he had one good serve, but Jason barely got his racket on it. But other than that, Aaron, I haven't seen a, a lot of great serves at Cliff so far. No, he clearly has not worked his way into the match yet. And Jason, you know, started off playing his game, hitting good lob serves, keeping Cliff off balance. There he forces Cliff to the ceiling. 
Wow, that that's unbelievable. Great that's shot. Four one shot, Dave. Uh, overhand reverse pinch. You know, it's early in the tournament, Sean, to have our first not for you to try at home shot, but that was certainly one of them. Is that it? Yeah, you know, great. You know, great cover there one, by Jason. Seven, you can tell he's angry. He slammed the wall because he covered Cliff's forehand pinch, had a very easy forehand up in the front court, and floated his pinch and gave Cliff a setup. You know, Cliff looks you know, stiff or like something's hurting. Um, no, I'm sorry. not sure Set what's up. going on. He, he did not Four, have seven, any one. tough matches, as we talked about in the pregame, Sean, so his body should be holding up fine. I'm wondering if he's hurt or if there's something going on because... Really, so far, he does not have that intensity, you know, we've become so accustomed to seeing. And with all the injuries roaming around the tour right now, from Sudsy backing out of the tournament on his uh, back injury, and uh, Jason with the calf, I asked Cliff, how are you feeling before this match? And uh, he said he feels great, feels fine. Um, and as you can tell, as you had mentioned, as he was coming right. out, he looks thick, Five, like seven, strong. Like, like, He's just working out like a madman, but it's it's like he's working out for size. Like the strength training is just incredible right you now. You know, he's definitely you know put on some mass, and you know sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. You know, every player's got to decide for themselves, um, kind of what their their right body makeup is. Again, here Cliff is upset with the ref's call, and uh, I don't want to side with Cliff too often, but I think he's got a legitimate point. He hit a granted they bumped into each other. But Cliff had a perfect down the line, a ball that was sliding right on the right wall. I don't think Jason had a chance to get it. And that is what we would call a justice point. After ref makes a bad call, if you come back and roll it out, it's uh, common for the winning player to say justice. So maybe uh, we're even now. Cliff Swain serving at one serves five, sticks with the drive serve. And that's a good serve right there. Anytime yeah. it catches that side wall on a drive serve, you try to hit as low as possible, that would be a crack ace. That's a little higher than a crack ace, but same result, yeah. ace serve. You know, this portable court that you talked about earlier, Sean, uh, is a slow court. And we're not going to see a lot of perfect aces on this court because it's just right slower than the courts these Five, players are used to playing on. So what we saw there, the great serve that he hit to Jason's forehand, about as good as it's going to get. You're not going to see a lot of clean, what I would call bullet aces on this court because that front wall is very dead. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That's an ugly rally. And ugly from the sense, again, I, I want to cater to those of you who Two, haven't seven, seen racquetball five. before. The object of this game when you're ripping balls is to hit it as low as possible on that front wall, meaning the best shot in the game called the kill shot. And the reason why Aaron reacting to that play with the oh my gosh is the ball is six feet, seven feet high, which is just unacceptable in this game. Especially at this level. Skip ball, skip, skip ball. Wow, you know what? Cliff, Five, is, two. I think Jason's going to get in Cliff's head if he keeps getting to balls like that. Because Cliff hit a perfect serve down the left wall this time. Jason dove head towards the left wall and flicked not a perfect ceiling ball, but a pretty tough ceiling ball on a serve that I think Cliff expected a winner on. Now that's two, the best shot five. in the game. A kill shot straight down the line, just beautiful. And that's a great shot, but Jason hit a pretty good serve that wants Cliff doing. I think his general viewpoint is if Cliff has to hit that great a shot to win a point, it's going to wear on him as the match goes on. Point. And you see, he, ha he hates five. that. You see Jason's body language. Such a big part of Jason's game is to get it in his opponent's head, not give any free points, dig every ball, you know, and when he gives free points, he really gets angry with himself. Oh, short. You know, we've, you've, I've heard you say this before, the key to a great player just is as a reminder, uh, to win no when you're not playing at your best because it's easy to win when you're just playing lights Five, out. Serving three. The thing that's so great about Cliff is he's just, he just perseverance. doesn't matter. He, right now you can see he's not playing the greatest racquetball ever, but he's right in this 3-5, right? Set up off the back wall. Point. Smart shot there. If Six, you remember seven, last three. time... I had mentioned that I didn't think Jason hit a particularly smart shot when he had that backhand set up because he pulled it across court to Cliff. There, took his time, pulled it right down the line for a winner. Cliff was again leaning forward. 
You know, and that's a good Three, seven, vindication of Cliff's argument earlier on why it shouldn't have been Hindu. There you see he hit it down the line, and Jason had no chance to cover it. 6-3, a little better at this point, Sean. I kind of feel like Cliff's working his way in slowly but surely. He doesn't look totally into it yet, but a little bit better. There's another great get there by Jason. Great get. Wow, great shot. The crowd loves it. Great match so far. Six serving four. We're going to be right back. Four. Cliff Swain, Jason Menino. Welcome back to Memphis. This is the men's pro quarterfinal. Oh my God, what a terrible call. What a terrible call Seven, that was. I mean, Jason's get was not even close. It may have been three bounces. As you're looking here on the replay, you gotta get the ball on one bounce. And again, very tough to call from a referee standpoint. This game is very fast. Ball's going 200 miles an hour. Players diving all over the place. But again, this is, as you can see in the replay, he, Jason dove. Just because he dove doesn't mean he got the ball. No, I, I was surprised that Jason even got back up because he missed it by so much that I would have thought he just would have you know, given up the point instinctively. Good passing shot by Jason. Good get by Jason. Ooh. Ball, shut up. Cliff, very still upset. angry about that other call. Four, seven, Which one? The, the, I mean, it was the hinder no call or the I two bounce? The, the back to back, <laughs> the hinder no call and two bounce. And, and at this point in the match, it's so critical. I mean, it's 7 4, but for those two calls, it could be 5 6, 6 6. Those are such important calls. And as a player, while it's tough to block it out, you got to block it out because if you let that stay in your head, it's going to cost you more than the one point that the call was. And I hate to say it, but in previous years, we've seen Cliff fall victim to arguing with the ref, not letting go of Fight. bad calls. Again, this is a sport where you're always going to get Fight. bad Fight. calls, but the key is to somehow let that go and not entertain the referee. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, I think the bad calls are more prevalent in racquetball than in other sports for a couple of reasons. The, the point you mentioned earlier, Sean, is that there really are a lot of discretionary calls, and that makes it tough. Then you've got the ball that's moving so fast, and then there's no appeal process the way the pro racquetball is laid out, like in tennis where you can appeal to the line judge, or football, you've Six, got seven, seven. video replay, racquetball, it's the one guy in the back, and if he misses the call, even if everybody in the whole place sees that it's a bad call, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, that's that's I would say a glitch in the in the system, and you have called you have been pointing that out for many years. It's a I don't know if they're ever going to change that. It's just crazy. I, I don't I don't understand it. They used to have an appeal process. It was very effective, and if nothing else, I think the concern seven, seven, was that six. it slowed down the game. But there's ways to manage that. You can limit it to three per game. You can, you know, not allow them to do it unless it's triggered by somebody else. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to manage it. But to have a situation where you can have a blatantly bad call go against the player just looks Shut real bad. When you were playing on the tour, did they have line judges back then as well? Always had line judges. And I say Six, back seven, then seven. with the utmost respect. Yeah, no. <laughs> But we cheated way more than these guys, so you really needed line judges. <laughs> I should say these guys. Both these guys played when I played the tour, so. Cliff Swain, with, what, 23 years he's been playing on tour. You know, Cliff won his first tournament. Seven, seven, six. Get ready for this. Tulsa, Oklahoma, 1985. Wow, I was 10 years old, Aaron. Didn't even know what racquetball was, I think, at 10 years old. Great ceiling ball by Cliff. Oh, right. skip ball. Yeah. And, and you know, we talked earlier in the pregame about how um, 
Jason has really evolved a little bit from just pure reckless abandon to really having great shot selection. Here you see a good example of an overhead that he bounced up high to Cliff's forehand, put Cliff in a very awkward position, just like he did there, to set himself up for another shot. Oh, great point. shot by Jason. Nine, Again, seven, really six. moving the ball around beautifully. Hit a cross court, got it behind Cliff, forced Cliff to reach back behind him. Cliff actually flicked a very good ceiling ball, and Jason hit a perfect shot down the left wall. Start out. All right, this is a six critical nine. point in the match here. As you get to 9 6, 8 8, this time every shot is critical, and this is really where the mental toughness of the player that's ultimately going to win really shines through. So we'll see if Cliff steps up. Steps up. Point. Wow. 7 serving 9. What a great yeah. serve. I'd like to see a replay on that one. That was really close. I'm not sure it was short, but it looked a little short to me. is the cliff bias I've grown accustomed to. Great get by Jason, back wall setup. Oh wow, Boy. Jason very upset. Tight matchup so far, Cliff Swain, Jason Menino, oh. still first game, this is the best out of five. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Memphis. This is the men's pro right, so quarterfinal. Eight, We've got uh, Cliff Swain and Jason Menino. Eight serving nine. Cliff Swain in the red up here. Six world titles. Big point here. Eight, nine. Cliff came back from six, nine here. Great serve. Set up for Cliff. Great get by Cliff. Oh, wow. Oh. Nine, seven, big, eight. big opportunity there missed by Cliff. Got to say something about Jason moving so well with that calf. I mean, I, I talked to him last night. He, he said he couldn't even put any weight on that leg. And look at him. I don't know if it's just the adrenaline pumping through the veins. or and It's probably a combination of the adrenaline and just a very, very mentally tough player. Great get by Cliff and a perfect ceiling ball. Another good ceiling ball. Oh! Good shot. Jason Menino. That's a great shot. Very patient. Cliff had a good ceiling ball. Cliff, Jason went back to the ceiling. Cliff left it just a touch short, and Jason just hit a great overhand pinch in that right corner. Pinch being where it goes side wall, front wall, and dies up front. Oh, and Cliff's not going to let it happen with that that's, shot. That's huge. To step up and pick that ball off the dark side glass. You know, we talked about this portable court, Sean. It is a tough right glass to pick the ball off like that on a lob. Unbelievable get by Jason. Oh, I mean, See, that's this, a... This, this is Jason's game. game. Great get on the return of serve. Great get on the next shot. Both diving. Didn't do that much with it, but just getting in Cliff's head a little bit. Cliff thinking he's got to hit a perfect shot. Skips the next ball. And there's Cliff going to the ceiling. Good ceiling ball by Jason. Oh, wow. It was like watching a rally from the 70s. <laughs> Set up for Jason. First game. What a beautiful point by Jason to end the game. Really a good example of just how smart and controlled Jason plays at this point in his career. The crowd loves it. We love it. We're going to take a little break here as Jason takes game one. We'll be right back. Well, Aaron, kind of what you would expect out of this match. They're both great players, veterans of this sport. The crowd, as you can hear, they just love these two players. I mean, really, this is exactly what you would want to see in a quarterfinal with two champions like Cliff Swain and Jason Menino. Yeah, it was a great game. Jason got up early, 3-0. Cliff kind of kept digging and clawing, but couldn't overcome that three-point lead. Sure enough, the game ended 11-8 in typical Jason Menino fashion. 
Couple of great dives, couple of great passing shots, and he's off the court with a one-game lead. Aaron, I love watching this matchup between these two players. You got Cliff, who's just absolutely relentless with the power, just bring and drive serves the whole time. He's just like a battle, like he's in a boxing match. And you've got someone like Menino, who puts a ton of pressure on his opponents by getting things that most players don't get and just get after get after get and put so much pressure on somebody that eventually he's gonna miss. Yeah, it's, it's a great matchup. Total contrast in styles. Pure power versus pure control. And I think it's far from over. We got a lot more good racquetball yeah. to watch. Yeah, I have a feeling this is gonna go the distance with that first close game. I have a feeling we might be in for a barn burner here in a game this five game tiebreaker as this is the best three out of five Jason to 11. Lee, one game to zero. Cliff will be serving, zero serving, zero. Cliff serving game two. Now, Sean, I'm gonna throw this out there. Hate to accuse anybody of misleading Whatever. us. Zero, seven, zero. But I'm not buying into this calf injury of Jason's. Does not look. <laughs> he looks fine to me. And I know Jason, he is an absolute student of the mental warfare of the game. And I can't help but thinking that the brace, yeah. the calf injury, so mentioning zero, seven, to zero. you that he knew we'd mention on camera, he mentioned the same thing to me, how bad it was. I can't help but think he wants to get a little bit in Cliff's head, wants to build some drama to get the crowd into it. So I'm just throwing that out there, Sean, for your consideration. <laughs> well, you know, I hate to think that he, he's lying, zero, seven, lying zero. straight to me. But, and, shocking. Know, to, that would be <laughs> shocking. To your point, Aaron, I will have to say that it does not look like there's much pain going on, especially after seeing him not being able to step on the right foot yesterday when we were talking about it. However, I oh, mean... Now, Sean, I'm, I'm even Hopefully. going to suggest maybe that's not even a calf brace. Maybe he's just wearing a shoe sock. <laughs> Well, Aaron, I, I do know this. He did get his trainer to lock it, lock the tape up to where he couldn't move his ankle. But I'm, I'm watching him walk around right now, and to your point, it does not look like there's much pain coming out of there, and it's not really affecting him. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's just again, adrenaline zero, zero. and his will to win. Again, we're talking about a guy who broke his back, came back, doctor said he'd never walk again, right. and he's got that mental toughness. He's got that special thing that you hear out on Dateline, uh, where <laughs> he can just somehow overcome the odds, and I, I, I'm giving him more zero, of that zero, zero. than I am All being right. a liar. All right, Aaron Sean, Katz. you you sold me, and I don't think I used the word liar. A, a crafty veteran, maybe I was referring to. Hold on, Jay. Hold on. He wasn't. Jason again, who is a well-schooled in the art of war. Still zeros on the board here. Replay, zero, seven, zero. Cliff wasn't ready for that, so they're going to replay the rally. Zero, zero. Ball is broken. That's a second broken ball. I don't know. I don't recall this many broken balls last year. I don't know whether they're hitting it harder or the balls are worse than they used to be. Well, they're, they're playing with the, is it the Pen HD, the high-definition ball? Oh my. I was wondering why I was seeing zero, it so seven, well. Zero. <laughs> wow. Zero. You know, zero, seven, zero. Jason got that serve about where he wanted to. When you're hitting that lob serve, you're not looking to hit the winner. What you're looking to do is put the ball out of your opponent's hitting zone. And he did that there. He forced Cliff to hit an overhead zero, seven, rollout, zero. which is one of the toughest shots in the game of racquetball. Absolutely amazing that this is still 0-0. Zero, zero. Great shot. Here, zero, Cliff. Seven, zero. I think Cliff has said, I've had enough with these lob serves. Even if I skip a couple, I'm done going to the ceiling. I'm just going to step up and rip them. That's my game. And that ultimately is always where Cliff falls on the power side of it. Great There's serve. 
Great get, set up again. Great get, set up again. Shut. You know, again. One swimming zero. You, you know, Jason just barely got to all of those, and it was a Herculean effort just to get him to the front wall. Rallies like that, if they bring Jason out, I think really work to his advantage over the course of the match because it just gets in the opponent's head. I got to hit it that much better to get a winner, and you start forcing skips, you start creating some frustration. Skip ball, skip. And there you see a very frustrated stroke by Zero Cliff. Serving one. Jason a very sharp angle into Cliff's feet off the glass side wall. Cliff trying to do too much with it, maybe a sign of frustration, and just skipped it right into the floor. Oh, wow. Point. Jason dies and barely gets his racket on it and yeah. kills it for a winner. And those will really break your spirit. It's dispiriting enough when he gets to the ball that you think was a winner and just barely gets it back. But when they actually get a winner out of it, it's very disheartening. We're going to take a little break here. Still in game two, no points scored. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Memphis, Tennessee. The 2006 Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championship. One serving one. Cliff Swain in the red. Six world titles, 22 years on tour, 40 years old. Jason Menino, a world title. You don't mind me throwing the 40 in there. No, to tw 22 years on tour, I was laughing at that. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It really is. And Jason Menino, not Absolutely necessarily fun. a young buck himself, one has been uh, definitely considered a, vet a veteran now with, I think it's his... 11th or 12th year on tour. Well, his first year on tour was 1994, so. Do the math, Sean. I can't. I'm going to go with 12 on that. If oh, not a good shot. And again, you can tell right now, even though it's 1 1, this match clearly has a tempo that's in Jason's favor. You know, it's Jason's getting the balls. Cliff looks like he's overthinking his shots, trying to really play a little too cute. Seems like he's expecting Jason to get to everything. I think Cliff really needs to clear his head, block out the fact that Jason's going to get to the ball. You just know that's going to happen and take a shot. Right now, he's not playing Cliff Swain racquetball. Cliff Swain racquetball is focused, Two, seven, intense, one. Shooting the ball, blocking out what your opponent's doing. Yeah, it does look like Cliff's still searching for that. I, I, I you definitely don't. The fadeaway rollout yeah. from 38 feet, and that's a great shot. And you know, again, Cliff just needs to go out there, swing, rip it up and down the lines, not worry about Jason. Jason's going to put a lot of balls back in play. You know that. Great serve, good return, set up. Good get by Jason. Take your shot. There you, this is a little better looking rally. Nope. So I've been waiting for this moment to talk about the rules of this portable court, which are unique to any other tour stop as they bring in this court. Well, it, actually, that one is not unique. That is the same rule on the other court in that the ball flew out of the side wall hitting the floor. If the ball goes front wall and goes out of the court, it is a loss of point to the player that struck the ball, where we may see the uniqueness of this court if the ball bounces on the two floor two. and then goes over the side wall, it's a play over. And, Sean, I think the point you were getting to is only when they play here in Memphis on this portable court that that side wall is cut off at the 12-foot point. Any other court in the United States or Canada where they play some tournaments, the side wall goes all the way up to the ceiling. Oh, two bounces, two bounces. That's that a two-bounce two call. Yeah, and Jason thought Three, the ball seven, was two. short. It, it was awfully close. Um, my eyes are getting bad. I, I think he may have just cleared, but it was awfully close. And this is the best run Cliff's had the last three or four points this whole match. He's swinging a little more fluidly, looks a little more focused. Got it. Good get. Set up for Jason. And skip it. Ball. You know, and that's going to pump Cliff up because he doesn't... He doesn't win nearly Probably. as many of those points as Jason does where he kind of fights, digs, gets a ball, and then forces the other player to make a mistake. Although Cliff is a great digger and a great getter, just not his game. 
The towel boy is going to clean up the floor here, and we're going to take a little break. When we get back here, 4-2 in game two, Cliff Swain and Jason Menino in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open. Here we are in game two, Cliff Swain serving four, serving two to Jason Menino. We're in game two, and Cliff has won. I'm sorry, Jason won the first game, and Cliff is winning the second game. Oh! Nope, two. Two yeah. bounces. And the towel boy is going to clean up the floor here. It's 5-2. This is the biggest lead for Cliff Swain thus far. Time's it. Five serving two. And good shot. Good serve. Skip ball. Skip, skip ball. And again, you know, Six right two. when I was jumping on Cliff a little bit, He's really turned it around here. This is his best four or five point run of the match. Looking much more focused, looking much more internalized, not thinking about what Jason's gonna get, taking his shots, and he's really putting Jason under a lot of pressure right now. Great That's a serve. tough drive serve right there. That's vintage Cliff Swain. Yeah, vintage Cliff and kind Seven, of serving two. makes me eat a little bit of crow because I had mentioned earlier that this court is slow and it is slow for almost all players besides Cliff. But there, he just hit an absolute power ace that was unreturnable by Jason. Well, shot, shot up. Seems wow. like both Two players are playing seven. really well. And Cliff seems to be hitting the ball with a little bit more snap on it now. He's starting to... Yeah, I got to tell you, that was an unbelievable shot. Cliff had a great serve. It was kind of a half jam, half Z in on Jason's body. And for him to flat roll that ball right. in the left corner. And again, Three, the, the quick seven. flick of the wrist of Jason on his backhand is crazy, these last two shots. Unbelievable. Two great backhand pin shots with a win. Side wall, front wall, very, very tight. Irretrievable. All three play. Three, seven, seven. Jason really takes his time up in the front yeah, court when that, he's ready to serve. And I like what he does. He's been doing that for years. It's something he's picked up. I think it helps him center his mind. He goes to the center of the court, hits it against the front wall. I think it That's reminds enough. him to come back Seven, to the center court. Three. It's his way of a mental reminder. There, it didn't seem to do much good <laughs> because Cliff just flat out rolled an overhand splat. Get ball. You know, so Eight, we're seven, really three. seeing, you know, what is why this is such an interesting matchup. You can kind of feel what each of the players are going to have to fight here mentally. Cliff having to fight the balls that Jason is getting when they almost look irretrievable. Jason, on the other hand, has what? to fight the phenomenal Nine, shots seven, that Cliff is going to hit and now not let that pervade his thinking except the fact that Cliff is going to hit a certain number of great shots, but you can't start forcing the ball because of that. And as you saw in that last rally with Cliff, with just a thunderous serve. He got Shut the setup up. that he wanted, and Cliff just buried it in the Three, corner. Seven, nine. As opposed to that rally, leaves it up on the back wall, and Jason makes him pay for it. But a great lead here for Cliff Swain. Hold it, hold it, replay. What Jason's arguing here is Three, what's known nine. as an avoidable hinder. I'm going to let you explain the, the well, definition of that. You know, the definition of an avoidable hinder is a, is a shot where the player hinders their opponent, and that hinder takes away an offensive opportunity. So Jason is arguing that that hinder, that stop play, took away an offensive shot of his in the center of the court, the argument is okay. Here is where I think there was a mistake made. I think it should have been a no call. I don't think it was a hinder. I think they should have just, at this skip level, ball, should have just let Jason play Four, through. Seven, nine. And there you see Cliff skip a ball from the back of the court. Now again, not 
to pick on Jason or in any way to imply uh, lack of veracity, but I've noticed a distinct difference in his limp when he's losing versus when he's winning. Wow, Aaron Katz really putting it out there. I am looking forward to um, hearing what Jason's reaction to your predictions of I'll, him faking the injury the is what you're basically saying. The only thing I request, Sean, is that you wait until I'm on the plane back out of town <laughs> until you let Jason know what I said. Set up off the back wall. Good get by Cliff. Set up for Jason. That's what? a great shot, yeah. especially Five for a guy nine. who's injured in the calf. Yeah, absolutely. Like that, to be able to hit that shot, it was really, really remarkable. Really amazing. <laughs> great smart shot, though, by Jason. Drilled it right down the line. Good ball. Hold it, Jason. Good ball. And this is big. You know, this is such Six, an important seven, run that Jason's had here. Gone from 9-3 to 9-6. Even if he doesn't come back and win this game, such an important momentum shift. You never want to let your opponent get on, get off the court on a roll, scoring six, seven, eight, nine points in a row. You always want to slow him up. It could have a huge impact on what happens the next game. So again, if Jason wins this game, Nine, kudos seven, to him, six. of course. But even if he doesn't, he swung the momentum a little bit, broke Cliff's confidence just a little, and he'll be in a little better position to come back in the third game. And remember, it'll still be one game apiece even if Cliff wins this game. That's a good yes. serve by Cliff Swain. And again, nine, the seven, backhand six, seven, of Jason. Just unbelievable. And again, the, the men, you can really feel each of these players kind of applying the mental pressure on each other. Jason getting the ball as Cliff hitting bullets and who's able, ever able to withstand that pressure better is going to ultimately win the match. Good pass. You know, the seven, seven, racquetball nine. at this level is a lot like what Yogi Berry used to say. It's about what did Yogi Berry used I, to I've, say? I've never caught it, actually. I, I, I was think, looking forward to the reference, though. I think Yogi Berry used to say it's about 90% mental and the other half is physical. That's a great angle and a phenomenal get by Jason. Set up for Cliff. Oh, oh boy. boy. Now, now here you see you know, what we talked about earlier. Cliff really pulling a stroke. Very, very tentative. Again, looked like Jason was in his head when he swung at that ball. We're going to take a little time out here as the Towboy cleans up the floor. We'll be right back. Time's the in. crowd really Game pushing two, for Cliffy Jason to get back. Eight, I mean, he, Jason has eked his way, just crawled his way back into this game, too, after Cliff had a huge lead. Step. Wow, barely missed that. That was huge. <laughs> That was nine, huge. Seven, After coming back from 9-3, if Jason had hit that shot, he would have pulled all the way back to 9-9. Nine, nine. Him serving at 9-9 nine, nine versus Cliff serving at 9-8. These points at this time of the game are so critical. Every shot can turn the momentum. Great get by Cliff. Ooh, set up. Set up off the back wall. Point. Jason barely missed that, but you got to give credit to the power of Cliff to thunder that ball down the left side wall. That was Phenomenal amazing. rally. Phenomenal rally. The crowd loves it. And here we are with Cliff Swain with a chance to win game two as he's got game point, 10 serving eight. And if Cliff wins this game, to your point, Aaron, one game apiece, and it's a whole new ballgame. Yeah, seven, and if he eight. scores here, it'd be 8-11, 11-8, no blood, one game apiece, best out of three match to get to the semifinals of the U.S. Open.
Let's see if Cliff can do it here. You know he's going to hit a drive serve. My guess, down the backhand side. I'd pick the Z, Sean. You got it. Great get by Cliff. Set up there off it is. the back wall. Great get by Cliff. Set up. Oh. Whoa. Jason laughing. Whoa. Oh, man. Boy. Huge if, setup for the game. Huge setup for the game. If Jason's able to claw his way back, Cliff's going to be thinking about that forehand for a long time to come. Flick by Cliff. So, and there's play. the call we talked about where it hits the floor and goes out, and that's a play over. Again, that can only happen on the portable court, which I think we've been a little misleading, Sean. They do use the portable Time's court eight serving set. not only in Memphis, but they use it at the Nationals in Chicago. So at those two tournaments where they're using this court, that, that ball's a play eight over. Serving eight serving ten. Jason Menino in the box, serving to Cliff Swain. Oh. Point. Now that, because it didn't hit the floor first, hit the front wall and went straight out of the court, is a point for Jason. All matches on the IRT Tour are win by two points. So if Jason scores here to tie it up at 10-10, he has sent the game into the equivalent of racquetball overtime because you'll need to win by Nine two serving points. Set. And this, you can tell Jason understands the importance. And Sean, I think I may owe Jason an apology. He has made a great comeback here, and he's still limping. So maybe the injury is uh, earnest. Wow. Oh. Cliff happy about that. He needed that shot. Huge shot. Ten serving nine. He needs to get out of this game. He, this is the from about 9-3 on. This has not gone well for Cliff. He needs to get out of this. And this is a perfect opportunity for him to hit the um, missile a serve so he doesn't have to worry about Jason doing anything phenomenal or him missing an easy shot. You know, Aaron, this crowd is classic because you can, equal, you can equally hear screams for Jason, screams for Cliff. I think these fans are just a fan of seeing this go the distance. Yeah, plus you got two popular players, right. former U.S. Open champs. They, they just want to see a great five-game match. Cliff is just, you can tell he's lathering here to hit a, just a missile. Oh, that might have bounced twice. Did that bounce right. twice back here? I don't think so. I think Cliff Nine, hit it so ten. hard it came off the back wall. Jason dug it and then hit a phenomenal shot. Regardless, great return by Jason. Cliff wanted that bad. He took a lot of time thinking about that serve. Let's see if he can recover here. Oh, oh, two. Two, two, two. Game two. Cliff still fighting to get this game. Ten serving nine. Welcome back, an exciting matchup to say the least here in the quarterfinals. Jason Menino takes game one, 11-8, and here we are with a dramatic game two. Cliff Swain with game point, but he's been broken of serve three times now. Yeah, and, and he, he is really taking his time these last couple of times in the box, thinking about what position to serve from, what serve to hit, knows how critical it is that he get out of this game. Set up off the back wall. Wow. Right Boy. Nine serving ten. Another great opportunity for Cliff. Backhand up in the front court and just slammed it off the back wall for a setup. And then Jason, very poised, very, very in control, rolled his forehand down the line. Oh. oh. Point. Full ten contact racquetball. Ten. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Terrible mistake by ten Cliff there. By Went points. for the overhead, drove it right down the center of the court, didn't clear, got an avoidable call on him, and we are in racquetball overtime now, Sean. 10-10, yeah. win by two, and essentially Jason has partially completed the comeback from 9-3. It'll be completed if he wins the game. Hold it, 2-2. Two, two. Great shot there by Cliff. All tied up here, 10 all. Cliff very upset about that. You know, and then a kind of a unique um, mental thing can go on here. If Jason, after fighting so hard, coming all the way back 
from 9-3, loses the game after catching Cliff at 10, it might actually be a bit disheartening to him. Sometimes it's almost better to come back 7-8, lose the game, but not get so close that uh, you started to smell it. So we'll see. This is a critical game for both these players right now at 10-10. Great shot. Set up off the back wall. Good shot. Good shot. All's good. 11, serving 10. Great shot there by Cliff. Really taking his time. Waited for that ball to get very close to the ground and just did a perfect pinch. Right wall, front wall. Right side wall, front wall for a tremendous point there. Great rally. Jason had a setup, missed it, and now Cliff serving again for the fifth time at 11 10. As we mentioned, these games are played to 11, but you got to win by two. Here it is, Cliff Swain with 11-10. Oh, short boy. Mm. Short serve. 10, 7, 11. It's just, it is so tough to close out these games. You know, we see it all the time in tennis and other sports. It's the, the mark of a champion is that ability to close out the game. And, and so far, Cliff, one of the greatest closers in the history of the game, oh, has been unable wow. to do it. And there's 11, a 7, terrible, 11. terrible miss. That's got to be disheartening for Cliff. Boy, Cliff has played some very loose points at some critical times. He had the avoidable call on him before when Jason was serving. There he skipped it into the floor. Um, set up for Jason. Set up for Jason. Oh, boy. Jason a little bit tentative. I think he sensed Cliff was going to be charging forward more than he did. Had a forehand setup, ripped it in Cliff's backhand. Cliff was there and again just skipped it. And this is huge for Cliff. If he loses this game after being up 9-3, I think it's going to be very, very tough for him to recover in the third game. Jason Menino with game point. Good get. Another good get by Jason. What a great ceiling ball he was able to pull off there. Jason Menino just proves what a warrior he is. Unbelievable. 13-11, Jason takes it with a 2-0 lead in the series. We'll be right back for game three. Aaron, what can you say about that second game? Cliff up 9-3. Jason shows that he's just a warrior that's never given up. Yeah, it's a huge comeback for Jason to be down 9-3 like that. Three, this is going to be zero. a great be testament of, of Cliff's heart. Possibly playing in his last U.S. Open, down two games to zero after letting that second game slip zero, away. Seven, he is going to have to mount a Herculean comeback here to get the next three games from Jason Menino. Well, we're gonna find out if he can pull that off right now as Jason starts to serve off with a lob to the backhand of Cliff Swain. There's the setup off the back wall. Jason getting every single ball right now. It's amazing. Jason just working so hard. Unbelievable. Perfect. What a rally. Just unbelievable the amount of balls he's getting. And again, it, you know, it, it goes both ways, Sean. A rally like that can be devastating to Jason because I don't know how long anybody can keep that up, much less somebody 31 with a bad calf. The flip side is it just keeps wearing on Cliff's mind, I think, that he's got to hit so many great shots just to win a point. I mean, there's an example. He hit four or five great shots. He didn't even get a point. He just got the serve back. Yeah, Cliff has got to be thinking some crazy thoughts in that head of his right now, especially after that game two when he was feeling like he was back in it. Everything was dead even there as it was 9-3 I mean, and uh, unbelievable that Jason was able to pull that out. I mean, this is right mentally where Jason wants Alvin the match to be. He's got Cliff looking door. back at this animal. He's getting to everything. He's got a zero, calf seven, brace zero. on. He's limping, and he's just not going anywhere, and he's up two games to zero. If you're Cliff, you got to be thinking three games against a guy who's playing with this zero, much seven, heart, this much intensity. You know, it was an uphill battle, and that is exactly the mindset Jason works to get his opponents in.
So in summation, Sean, this match is right where Jason wants it to be. Point one seven zero. Down the line kill, and you can see he's starting to get a little bit of sprite in his step. You know, he killed that ball, went to it. He's moving a little quicker. He recognizes that the momentum is in his favor. Another Hold forehand down the line. Oh, Thank my God. Oh, oh, my God. Whoa. <laughs> the hinder calls have been a little off uh, yeah, by I, Jason Thorner, our what, referee. What's really disappointing about that one, Cliff didn't even go for nah, the ball. He was done. He was done. And, you know, Cliff's really got to turn this around because if he gets down three or four points here, I really think it's going to be uh, insurmountable. Oh, Another boy. miss by Cliff Swain. You know, this is... Cliff's really got to suck it up now. His body language looks terrible. His eyes look bad. He does not look focused. Um, he's really going to have to turn things around quickly. Oh, boy. Three serving zero. It really looks like Cliff is kind of borderline at the edge of phoning it in. You know, he's really got to regroup here. He hasn't even gone for two or three balls this game. Very uncharacteristic of the great champion. Point. Wow, and oh Jason boy. just, to put more pressure on him, yeah. Jason's just playing flawless yeah. right now. Yeah, and as is very typical, as one player gets down, it lifts the other player up. So as Cliff is kind of really down and dejected, you can see Jason's confidence really starting to build. Oh, boy. Ceiling ball off the back wall. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's amazing. We're going to call for the towel boy here as Jason has been diving all over the court, and it must be soaked out there. 5-0, Jason Menino. Game three. Jason just dominating so far. The Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships is brought to you by... Choice Hotels International, family of hotel brands with over 5,000 locations in eight different brands worldwide, offering every type of accommodation in every price range. We meet all your travel needs. For reservations, visit us at choicehotels.com today. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. And by Wilson Art Flooring. If it's tough enough for pro racquetball, it's tough enough for your home. Enjoy the beauty and durability of Wilson Art Flooring, available at fine floor covering centers everywhere. Also, Nuveen Investments, dedicated to helping you reach your goals in life. Ask your financial advisor today how Nuveen's growing range of equity and fixed income products can help you support your long-term plans. And by USA Racquetball, your link to the greatest game on earth. To learn more about how racquetball can improve your quality of life, visit usaracquetball.com for all the details. This is looking very bad for Cliff. He is down 5-0 in this third game, two games to zero. And in between that time out there, Sean, he was wandering around the court aimlessly Six, seven, like a nomad in the desert. I mean, he really looks out of it. He's not focused. His eyes are not on the court. Um, this is, I think this is all over. The fat lady is over in the corner warming up her vocal cords. The vintage line shot, shot from Aaron Katz comes out at 6-0. Zero, six, zero, early, early by my standards to pull out that line, Sean. But yeah. Cliff just looks so out of this match right now. Let's see. He's got to try and regroup to pull something together. You know Jason Menino is not going to take his foot off his neck. And it's just so disheartening when you're playing not at your best, but you're playing against somebody who is playing phenomenal and getting everything. Jason is just hitting 99% right now. It's unbelievable. And the game is just so mental. And, again, Cliff you know, does not need to prove his mental toughness after 22 years on the tour and six world championships but today and today is all we can talk about sean or should be talking about i think jason brought a little more intensity a little more passion a little bit more i'm leaving everything on the court to get the victory jason with a 6-0 lead sticks with that lob serve to cliff's backhand and a nice, easy stroke by Zero, Chris Lane. Six. And you see Jason, he doesn't want to let up. He was frustrated that he missed the serve. You know, he knows how quickly these things can change. Um, that being said, he recognizes he's in total control right now. Great get by Jason. 
Unbelievable get by Jason. Oh my god. This is just unreal. Oh. That is unbelievable. To make those gets, somehow turn the rally to the offensive for himself, and then to end it with a backhand off the back foot from 38 feet. Unbelievable stuff. Really is incredible, the focus right now of Jason Menino to hit all these Six, incredible seven, shots. Zero. Get everything. It's just a ton of pressure that's just yeah, and weighing he, too much on the mind of Cliff right now. And again, Jason recognizes that you just don't let your foot off the pedal here, that by getting balls like that, to the extent Cliff has any thought of mounting a comeback, that is a very discouraging point for Cliff. I think he got it. Look at that. Point seven, serving zero. And that's just, you can tell he is in Cliff's head. I mean, Cliff, you know, I think the ball may have been two bounces that Cliff is talking about, but he's got to play through that ball to go for that silly touch shot just because he thinks the ref made a bad call, I think is an indication of how much Jason is in his head. I mean, that could be what he was doing, but it might be a chance that nothing else was working. So Cliff had to try something else by hitting a little softy in the front court. I mean, every time he rips it right back down the wall, Jason's right there. Maybe he thought he was playing back a little bit, he dink a little something in the front court. Who knows? As of right now, I don't know if Cliff really knows what to do at this point because it seems like everything he attempts, Jason's got an answer for. Fair enough. Time's it. Duly noted, Seven, so Mr. Zero. Oyster. Thank you, Aaron. I believe it's the first time we've agreed on something in five years. And that's out of the court. We're going to play that again. Seven, seven, zero. Huge lead in game three for Jason Menino. 7-0 against the champion Cliff Swain. Cliff talking about this being his last season on tour, meaning this is the last U.S. Open for Cliff. Point eight, seven, zero. I, I hate to see this being his last showing, but after 23 years of just playing amazing racquetball. You know, it'd be a disappointing way to end it here at the Open. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, boy, this has got Nine, seven, zero. ugly. Very ugly, Sean. Cliff has, you know, really lost it in this game. He never recovered from that second game after being up 9-3, letting it slip away. Yeah. Um, just never recovered. Menino misses that one. That's his first miss Zero, certainly seven, this game, maybe the last game and a half. I don't remember the last time Jason skipped the ball, and you can tell Jason's still totally into it. He got very upset with himself because he knows you just don't let up. He saw how quickly the momentum shifted for Cliff in that second game, and he's very conscious of not letting that happen to him. Oh, that's a great angle, but a phenomenal get. Unbelievable. There's the setup. Skip ball. Cliff is just, I, I, what do you, I, I'm speechless. I just don't know what to say. That's yeah. just. It was right back there, Jay. Cliff has just got to be, to hit the wind has just come out of his sails. He's missed so many easy setups. We're going to take a little break here. Cliff's trying to find a way to crawl back into this match and get a point on the board here. 9-0, game three. Zero. 9 0, Jason Menino with the lead. Two more points, and he's got this match. It's unbelievable. That's some Shot good power off the bracket of Cliff Swain. Yeah, it's a phenomenal Zero, shot. Nine. And, at, and at this point, I almost, you know, not that any of this matters that much at 9-0, but 
A rally like that almost works against Cliff because it just reinforces how many unbelievable shots he's got to hit to win a point. Point. Cliff Swain with a point on the board now, 1-9. And you know, that's just got to be eating Cliff up to be on the court, the great champion he it is, and to have the crowd applauding because he's not going to get a donut in the third game of the U.S. Open. I mean, it's just got to be his. He is a athlete with a phenomenal amount of well-earned pride. Replay. One serving nine. The ball hit Cliff. I'm going to replay that rally. Oh, ball. skip ball on the Ooh. serve. Nine serving one. Oh, boy. You know, so, you know, one of the great things about individual sports is, Sean, when you, it's great, you get all the accolades, you get all the cheers, you get all the prize money. One of the terrible things about it, when you're on that court all alone and things just have fallen apart and the wheels the have trap, come off, you've got nobody there with you. Ten and serving one. Here you're in a situation where the wheels have absolutely just come off the screen skipping serves, getting frustrated with the ref. Uh, it is a very lonely feeling when things start going like that, Sean. And unfortunately, you know, I've experienced many of those moments against Cliff Swain, so. That's a great shot. And on that last call, as you can see there by the replay, that it was a skip ball. Crowd knew it, and Jason didn't call it. And not only is he not playing well, didn't even get the call. Short okay. serve. Oh boy. And that's not Ten even close. One. I guess it's progress. He skipped the last one. So if he gets the serve back, maybe he'll get it a little closer. Yeah. <laughs> Lob serve for Jason Menino with the match point. It's a good serve. Oh there's boy. his setup. And there's another setup for the match. Cliff somehow stays in it. And Jason just as passionate yeah, as was. he was when he started this match. Hey, he knows he's, you got to close this out. Crazy things can happen the longer you're on the court. And Jason's been probably on both sides of, of big turnarounds. And as experienced as he is and as unbelievable a job as he's done to get to this point in the match, he doesn't want to take any chances, get off the court, get to the locker room, rest up your body, rest up your calf, because he's going to have to go to war again next match. Cliff Swain trying to claw his way back in here. One serving 10 has That's not like looked good for him 10. throughout the entire match. Had a brief run there, 9-3 in game two, and that was taken away from him as Jason just started playing flawless. Came back, won game two, and here's Cliff. Coming oh, off short, of a short. skip serve, a short Ten, serve, seven, and again, another short serve. Yeah, almost symbolic of, of how most of this match has gone. Again, Jason Menino with the match point. Ten serving one. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Call the replay there. Call the replay. I thought you had to go around Jason to get that ball, so I gave you a hinder ball there. Ten serving one. A hinder called by Jason Thorner. Cliff didn't like that. Jason with, again, another chance to win the match. There's the lob serve. Good shot. Skip. Skip all day. He called the ball a One skip. I thought he said good shot. Good shot, skip. skip. I thought he said that as well. It's a little confusing. I'm not sure if Jason was clear on what he thought it was. Yeah, I think that's a referee hedging his bet. Make both calls and look for the body language of the players. See if they give it away. <laughs> 
you know, it's it's always that last point's always tough. No matter how dominant it is, no matter how down the other player looks, scoring that last point's always tough. Short ball, side out. Is that four straight short? Four, four straight one. short serves. They hadn't put the ball in play the last four times he's been in the box. Again, another attempt for Jason Menino to take the match. Ten serving one. Jason very, very focused right now. Good get. Wow. That's an unbelievable shot. I think it was hit a little bit in desperation, but it's an unbelievable shot. Jason got to the ball, hit a good ceiling ball. Cliff just didn't want to have to run back again to hit another ceiling ball, so he hit a short hop off the floor and just flat rolled it out. Unbelievable shot. Now, if it was 10-10, that would be a very exciting moment, but at 1-10, Sean, I don't know that it had quite the suspense that a shot of that quality warrants. Jason's had six chances to win the match. Cliff, four straight short serves, one being a skip. Let's see if Cliff can get this rally started. Time's in, one serving ten. He's by changed. getting a good serve going. Right out. Yeah. Ten serving one. Well, now we need to change the stat. He's hit four shorts and then one serve that he didn't get to hit the third shot of the rally on. So he hadn't hit a third shot to score a point his last five times in the box. 10-1, another chance for Jason to win the match. Again, Cliff hanging in there. Hanging in there. Needs to get a couple points on the board here to try to mess with the psyche of, of Jason but, and get some confidence going. I think Cliff just wants to make sure he uses all his court time. You know, he booked the court for a whole hour, so he wants to make sure he uses all his court time. Another short serve for Cliff Five out of six. You know, Jason, if that calf is as bad as it's looked from time to time in this match and as bad as he says it is, he wants to get off this court because anything can happen when you've got an injury like that. Good flick. Is that out? One serving ten. And if you're Jason, you're getting a little bit of fr a little bit frustrated that you can't close it out. But by the same token, Cliff isn't clawing his way back at all, so you can get a little bit comfortable that you're not being punished for your transgressions. Good serve. Good flick by Cliff off the back wall. Skip ball, ball by Jason Menino. Right, the second skip of the game. And to your point, maybe the game and a half has he played flawless in game two. 9-3 to 10-2. Down 9-3 in the second to up 10-2 or 10-1 in the first. In the third, it's been a great performance by Jason. Right out. 10 serving two. I believe this is eight. This is number eight on the attempts for Jason to win this match. Now 10-2. Menino sticking with the same serve. Half lob to the forehand. Caught the ball, and there it is. Jason Menino wins the match in three. Unbelievable. Quite a dramatic finish here as it looked like Cliff was going to get back into this. And Jason Menino took the wind out of his sails and came back from a 9-3 deficit, beat him 13-11, and then just played flawless in game three. Yeah, that, that second game was really what turned the match around. Phenomenal comeback by Jason. Well-earned victory. Kind of a disappointing way for Cliff Swain to potentially end his career in a match like this. Um, but his career was phenomenal. He'll be remembered as the great champion he is. And Jason Menino, kudo to him. Because, kudos to him because great match today, great comeback in the second game, and he's moving on to the semifinals of the U.S. Open. Well, let this just be a tribute to the great Cliff Swain, as we've been calling him the greatest player of all time, and he truly is with six world titles. He comes here, finishes here, his career at the U.S. Open, in front of a capacity crowd, a standing ovation.
Cliff Swain, we salute you. And Jason Menino, congratulations. For myself and Aaron Katz, thanks for watching the Tennis Channel and the U.S. Open.